big, elegant introduction. So. All right. All right, guys. So if we are feeling any oysters this evening, tonight we are doing Kiwa Cups coming out here in South Carolina. It's going to be a little bit smaller on that cup size. Definitely has a nice minerality and river element. We also have some coming out of Massachusetts. Those are going to be very, very plump, very buttery and uh, smooth. If you're feeling extra fancy, we are featuring a four ounce Wagyu steak tartare, a Wagyu here at Hall's Japanese beef. It's A5, so it's some of the highest in its rating class. And that raw form melts right over the palate. I call it steak butter for a reason. It's very, very flavorful. The only way it gets better is if you actually cook it. I always recommend trying just an ounce or two just to mark it off your list. But the steaks are certainly what we're known for here at Hall's Chop House. We get all of our wonderful cuts here from Allen Brothers, based up in Chicago. They're a family-owned business for over 120 years, and they produce some of the top 2% certified prime cuts in the entire United States. So I like to say that there are no wrong choices. We do feature wet and dry aged steaks on our menu. Your wet aged steaks are basically vacuum sealed marinating their own juices. We do that for about 35 days, allowing those cuts to hold on to all that wonderful moisture for that nice plump buttery uh, texture and mild flavor profile that most people uh, know and love these days. Your dry aged steaks are an old fashioned process where the cut is directly exposed to uh, oxygen for about 45 days in a temperature controlled environment that allows the enzymes to break it down, maximize tenderness, bring out the heaviest flavor elements of the cut, basically cranks it all the way up. Now on here, Mr. Hall's favorite, it's going to be the wet aged New York strip here. New York's going to be firm in its texture, but very evenly balanced, a great go-to steak. It's better older brother is going to be the Kansas City. You add that bone on there, along with it being dry aged, you're going to get a lot more flavor, a lot more earth and smokiness as the broiler roasts that bone at about 1800 degrees, just pull some flavor into the cut. Uh, personally though, I side with my chef, the dry aged ribeye and the tomahawk are certainly the big flavor powerhouses here. Have a wonderful deckel cap on the outside, just melting in at those hot temperatures. With your tomahawk, it's going to be your midsection on the rib. Uh, so you're going to have a nice balance of tenderness and flavor. Great steak to share as well. You can easily slice this up for you gentlemen in the kitchen. Serve it to your French style if you feel like trying something real special. And then last but not least, if either of you are filet fans, have a wonderful 14 ounce bone-in filet. Exquisitely rare. We only get about four of these per steer. Uh, four ounce bone adds a lot of extra marbling on there as you can see. So you're going to hold on to that soft, soft velvety texture. but going to get a lot more flavor the closer you get to that bone. And then lastly, off the menu tonight, we are featuring a wonderful 8-ounce grass-fed bison filet. Bison's going to have a little bit of earth and minerality, along with being especially delicate with a slightly sweet finish. Tonight, we're going to be pairing this over a truffle mushroom risotto set, dressing it with some red wine bordelais, and then throwing a big old dollop of truffle butter over the top. Tell me about your prime rib tonight. Prime rib So we slow roast it throughout the entire evening and cover it in a peppercorn wine. We cut it to order so we can either give you a leaner, more marbled cut, kind of a chef's choice, right in between. It's absolutely delicious, nice and succulent. Always can serve it with a little au jus, horseradish sauce, or anything like that. Sold, mate. Done and done.